Today's lesson we'll be looking at chemistry 1502. Our topic for today is resonance structures lesson 101. Let us start. Resonance structures. There are those types of structures that has more than one type of a structure. And we normally use the symbol to represent the resonance structures, a double-headed arrow. And you should know that those structures the is the most stable structure. As we do examples, I will note down what is important to take note when we are doing resonance structures. And one of the first basic important rule that you must take note of, we do not tamper with bonding electrons especially the ones that they bond the two atoms. Now we'll explain this further using examples. Now the first one, let us start with NO2 minus. Now we have nitrogen bonding with oxygen. This will have a negative charge. Let me actually, it's like this. Now we know that this negative, it comes from this oxygen. Now its resonance structure will be like this. This double bond will be here instead of the second oxygen. And this one will have six lone pairs and so these two we call them resonance structures they both represent this and you can see they are different somehow and then we do have the most stable structure but in this case you can see that the formal charges are more or less the same this, will have, this one will have negative 1, 0, 0, and then we have 0, 0, negative 1. In most cases, how do we tell which one is the most stable? We look at the structure that has uh, more formal charges that are close to 0. So in this case, you can see we have two zeros, one negative 1. Our second example is this one. The previous lesson video, we did determine the correct Lewis structure for this particular polyatomic ion. So we have negatives here, then we have here. So we can see that, okay, by the way, nitrogen will have a positive charge. So you can see that the overall of this formal charge will give us this one. So this is correct. Now looking at a resonance structure for this, I'm going to do this step by step so that you understand. What will happen is that these electrons, one of the double bond electrons will flow to the oxygen such that we are going to have something like this. Now the moment this double bond that is between this oxygen and nitrogen goes to oxygen, you can see that nitrogen now obeys octet rule and then it must have the lone pairs but in this case you can see that the sum of these formal charges they don't add up to this so as these electrons they move from a double bond i mean this bonded between nitrogen and oxygen these ones they come here such that we have something like this then we have to remove the lone pairs again and have our positive charge again. So you can see that these two structures, they still add up to negative one. I'm talking about the formal charge. So the two, there is in a structures. 
another reasoning structure would be instead of these electrons these ones moving here these ones will move here so our double bond will be here then that that will be the third resonance structure now also in this case you can see that the formal charges are the same we have one negative one negative one and zero we have one um, negative one negative one and zero see there's no much stable resonance structure we look at the resonance structure of SO3 we have S which forms double bonds with oxygen as you can see we have zero here and remember that sulfur is one of those exceptional elements when it comes to octet rule now in this case if we can take this pair of electrons and bring them here we are going to have something like this sulfur you can see sulfur here it doesn't have any I mean the formal charge is zero and then once you bring it here we know that according to the basics 5.2 less than 5.2 of Lewis dot diagram this will have a negative charge now since the bond is between sulfur and oxygen has shifted the electrons have shifted to the negative to the oxygen it means that sulfur here will have a positive you can calculate the formal charge you will see that sulfur will have a positive charge by the way these two they are resonance structures and if you can take the overall of this negative and positive it will still give you this the very same procedure if we take this and bring them here instead of this we are going to have another resonance structure and also this one we bring it here instead of the two resonance structure now looking at this you can see that it doesn't have any plus minus it's not a polyatomic molecule so in this case just have oxygen bonded with other oxygens now we cannot do this the reason is we are going to have oxygen here let's say with its low pairs then we are going to have two plus here remember that if oxygen bonds two times it has two lone pairs and then the charge the formal charge is zero when it bonds once it will have something like this which is the formal charge is negative one but if it bonds three times we are going to have one lone pair with positive one formal charge then if you put another bonding here it will have two plus then in this case we have zero zero and then you can see that the overall charge is not zero instead it's two so you should be careful when you look at something like this the overall charge should guide you on how to draw the loose dot diagram so in this case let us do like this we put a double bond here and then this one you know that the formal charge will be zero then here we put the single bond with six known pairs formal charge will be negative one then this will just have single pair of lone electrons with a positive charge now you can see that one plus minus one will give us zero so this is one of the correct structures of O3 the resonance structure of this we simply have a double bond here so we can just redraw everything but put this double bond here okay the last one it's CH3 and CO now in this case let us start by doing the Lewis dot diagram and try to reach the octet state as much as possible 
So we can see that this will go hand in hand or will go together as a unit. So we have nitrogen and carbon here. We know that carbon bonds four times. So here we already have two bonding and then we can put another two here since oxygen it also bonds two times. Then nitrogen it bonds three times so we can put a single bond here with this carbon. And then we know that this carbon will have three hydrogens. You don't have to be confused. So and then now we can go ahead and fill in the lone pairs. Nitrogen will have two. Oxygen will have four. Now in this case you can see each and every element has reached its octet state and the uh, formal charges are zeros. Let us look at resonance structure. Now we can do something here. We can just take these electrons, bring them here, and then since carbon, if we remove this single line, carbon will bond three times. We take these electrons, we bring them here. Then between nitrogen and carbon, we are going to have triple bond. So this doesn't get affected. So here we have triple bond. And then we have carbon single bonded with oxygen and then oxygen will have six lone pairs and then now we look at carbon is still bonded four times so there's no charge now we look at nitrogen remember that we said nitrogen if it bonds four times it yields a positive charge so in this case you can see one plus negative one it will still give you zero and then we can still do something with this if we can switch places nitrogen and carbon such that we have something like this instead of nitrogen we have carbon here and then carbon bonded three times with nitrogen and then nitrogen bonded only once with oxygen is it possible? Let us look at this. And then we have negative and positive here. Well, yes, it makes sense. It is actually correct. So this is another resonance structure. And then again, what we can do actually, let us not consider this one we can create better resonance structures. Let us not consider this one. Let's look at something like this. Well, in this case, if nitrogen bonds two times, it will have lone pairs. Then oxygen here, it bonded three times. It will have only a single pair of lone electrons. So this will be negatively charged. This will be positively charged. But you can see the overall is still zero. Now looking at one, two, three, which one is the most stable? Now looking at the formal charge of this, we have zero, we have zeros for hydrogens, we have zero for nitrogen, zero for carbon, zero for oxygen. Then here we have zeros of hydrogen and carbon, then we have one, we have zero, we have negative one. We have zeros for hydrogen, we have zero for carbon. We have negative one for nitrogen, we have zero for carbon, then we have positive one for oxygen. The most stable one is the one that consists of the many zero formal charges, which is um, option one. So that's it for this lesson video. This is Babula SJ. Thank you very much.